Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to win on Victor. What we're going to be doing today is you and me together will be playing a game on different ELOs and I'll be taking you guys with, through different strategies and different example games of what to do and what to be thinking about on Victor. So today together we're going to play some games. I have a silver account lined up, a gold account, and a high platinum low diamond account. So it should be good. We should cover most of the latter. Of course, if you guys are higher rated than that, I stream Grandmaster Solo Q on Victor all of the time. Um, and basically what's gonna happen is I'm gonna try to emulate the rank that I'm playing in. So first we're gonna start on our silver account. I'm gonna try to pretend to be a silver player, right? I'm gonna do like silver player mechanics. I'm not gonna do anything fancy, you know, no crazy flashes, no crazy limit testing, no crazy just spacing people. Um, and I'm not gonna do anything super complicated. We're just gonna play very fundamentally. And I'm gonna show you guys, if, you know, if you're a silver player, what ideas you should be thinking about, how you should be approaching the matchups and how to win on Victor. So let's hop into this first game. Okay, what's up guys? We're hopping into our first game here. This is on the silver account. Uh, you guys can see the op.gg here. Everybody, it's uh, silver two, silver three, silver average. Now this game, we're into Vladimir. Vladimir is an interesting matchup here. We're taking Summon Airy with Monoflow Band, Transcendence, and Scorch with Resolve, Secondary, Shield Bash, and Bone Plating. Now, in higher elo, I would actually recommend going first strike into Vladimir. But when you're first learning a champion and when you're in this like kind of elo, this silver range, what I really recommend is just sticking to one rune page. Every time you change your runes, it kind of changes your identity a little bit. And our goal into the Vladimir. I actually have a video on how to counter Vladimir, so watch that one after this one, but the idea is we basically want to fight the Vladimir. Obviously, avoid his stuff, and I'm trying to emulate a silver player, so I'm not going to do anything crazy. You know, when our Q's up, we'll hit him if he doesn't have his empowered Q, and we'll poke him down, but mostly what we're focusing on, I mean, we're playing Victor, so last hitting is going to be really important. So we're focusing on last hits. We're focusing on CSing. Um, bro, what on earth is our Fiora doing? That's crazy. Hit level two, so... That's really good. Their jungle is going to be really behind the pace of the game. And it looks like Fiora is going to get away. But we're mostly looking to fight Victor, or Vladimir rather, in the river. People try to overplay into the Vladimir in lane. They think, oh, he's a hyperscaler, so I have to beat him really hard. It's like, yeah, you have to CS well with him, and, and you can try to bully him. Because if he's bad, maybe you can get away with a kill. But it's hard to kill a Vladimir. It, it really is. Um, they have too much sustain. And if you overplay, you end up just kind of losing. So we're really just going to try to keep priority. And we're going to try to fight in the river with our jungler. We're going to try to fight on objectives. Oh my goodness, we missed the cannon. Like a true silver player here. I'm trying to click a lot less and kind of emulate silver mechanics. Not trying to do anything special. Very simple, fundamental gameplay here. Um, I'm waiting for my mono flow band to come up. You can see right here. Now it's up. I'm going to shoot him with a laser. And we're going to go ward. We always ward on the same side as our jungler. You can see our jungler is on blue. And since I want to like not play lane with him, I'm actually going to come top and I'm just going to see. You know, this is not something I was trying to do, but I went to get my vision and it looks good. So I'm going to come take a look. Um, it looks like he has vision. So we're not going to overforce that. It's completely okay. Deficiency. Completely okay. We're never trying to overforce anything. And then we'll come back. You can see we, we didn't miss a single minion. Because we're going to come laser this. Okay, well we missed one, but we got the XP for it. And now he's coming in for a gank on us. And now Vladimir is kind of screwed. Because we have a nice little freeze set up here. And he has no W. Okay, well, if we miss our laser, it's a lot easier for him. And over the course of the video, I'm going to be talking about some just general Victor tips. One of the biggest ones. You always want to throw out your laser when he's stepping up. So if he's stepping up to last hit, we're just going to prevent this from crashing. When he's stepping up to last hit just like that, that's when you're going to throw the laser. So you always want to wait for him to kind of overcommit to something. Another pretty big mechanical tip. I'll show you guys when he steps up, but when you Q, 
Before you use your empowered auto attack, you want to move a little bit. And that will make the empowered auto attack come out actually a little bit faster. Because you animation cancel the back half of the Q getting thrown out. And here, <clears throat> I think this is a pretty standard silver game. We, we've just been CSing with the Vladimir, nothing crazy. I'm not over forcing into him. One of the biggest mistakes I see when people play into Vladimir is they try to overplay. I'm not trying to overplay. You know, I'll poke him a little bit. But again, you can see I'm running out of mana before he's even running out of health. So we'll never kill him. We're just respecting his Q. Completely fine. What I really want is to play on Dragon. Like, that's what I want. It looks like our Fiora is just really strong this game as well. Now, it's not going to happen every game, but when it does happen, we can just let her carry. You know, we, we do not need to force anything. When your teammates are ahead and you have, like, these strong teammates, well, it's maybe going to be a little bit more interesting. You want to kind of view yourself as the insurance policy. So this game, my job is just to stay well farmed, make sure Vlad can't carry, and not take any risks. So we're going to be very risk adverse. When your team is losing, sometimes you have to be willing to take more risk. Because if you don't do anything, you're just going to lose anyways. And now, um, usually on Victor, you want to back around the time you can get Lost Chapter. You usually want to back on Cannon Waves. That's a better fundamental. So I'll actually... We'll stay fundamental. You want to back when the Cannon Wave is coming to lane. Now, Vladimir's level 6. He's actually stronger than us uh, in an all-in. We're stronger than him in a river skirmish. We're stronger than him by like poking him. But we're never going to take like a fair trade with him. Actually, Mashi wants a gank, so maybe I can bait this guy. And that's very nice. He was super close to dying. We'll hit him with one of those. I mean, he's really close to dying if he's not careful. We'll go ahead and use our potion here. Oh, this is just so crazy, man. <laughs> Silver games are crazy. And again, we're not forcing anything. You know, silver games are so chaotic, and oftentimes what happens is people get caught up in the chaos. Play very stable. I I'm confident that my champion just wants to farm. So I'm just staying disciplined on the farm. Let's see, if is Twitch chat saying anything? What's up, Muwu? A true silver mid laner would blame the jungle. <laughs> What's up, Eli? How you guys doing? Now, pretty much every game, I'm going to go Landry's. But we can't afford that yet, so I'll just go Boots and Refill. On your first back, if you can afford Refill, you should always buy it. Lost Chapter, of course, is like our biggest spike in lane because now we can just throw lasers all the time. Now that we have Lost Chapter, our plan is to perma shove and perma go towards our jungler. So, we get to lane here, and just every time our E's up, we're just going to throw it on the wave. Ideally, we hit the wave and the Vladimir. We would call that a super efficient cooldown. So, I'm going to try to line it up. Boom, wave and Vladimir. Boom, look at that. So efficient. So efficient. Of course, we're always respecting when Vlad has his thing up. Now we have priority on the wave, so we are free to look where our jungler is going. So I'm just looking at my minimap. I'm thinking, okay, jungler, where are you going? Now, I also don't have vision. But in true silver fashion, I'm just trying to be conservative. I'm trying to be safe. Because I feel like I'm getting ganked here. But we'll go get vision. We crash a wave. We use our timer, we go get vision, and then we think, hmm, can I go top here? Um, we'll think about it. No, they have vision. I'll push one more wave. That's just kind of what we're thinking, and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna push. I mean, if he's just gonna full fight us, like, we're much stronger than him right now. I'll just keep poking him in the wave down. And now, as I'm looking at my minimap, I'm seeing Master Yi is going top. As well as, I wanted to gank this. So now this gank's looking really good. 
And we know they don't have any vision here because we just checked that. And this is a cannon wave, so it's going to take him longer to push. And it looks like... It's really sad we don't get an assist because I missed the laser in true silver fashion, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, that's exactly how we play against Vladimir. We're just farming well. We're doing more things on the map than him. We're not trying to like snowball on him in the 1v1. He's stronger than us in the 1v1. That's often, people have a misconception about that. And now that we have Empowered E, we can do it even better. And we want to fight in the river, so I'm going to go towards the Diana. We're even going to flat. I was even going to flash because I really just want to play towards that identity. I really just want to fight in the river. If you're going to flash, do it for your identity. And it's just, we have facilitated our team much more than Vladimir has. So after this game, Vladimir is probably going to be like, oh man, it's just a team gap. He didn't give his team the chance to even win. Well, that's all we're doing. All we're doing is playing around our team. And we're farming well. And now he's starting to get a little bit low because he's taking a lot of poke. So maybe we think about killing him. Again, not going to force anything. Hello, Diana. It looks like Diana's tilted. Yeah, Diana's just going to run it down. So it looks like, uh, looks like this game is over. So, we did get pretty lucky this game. Okay, well, now he's tilted. Oh my goodness, and he lives. Oh my goodness, we might die. Ooh. I'm actually super surprised uh, that he didn't die to tower there. But since Diana just died and Vladimir just died, I'm going to cast one more E on the wave and then I'm out of here. Now, this was a pretty lucky game, right? Our top laner was ahead by herself. Um, and their jungle got tilted. But we helped facilitate our jungle's lead. We helped facilitate our top snowballing even harder, right? And that's our goal. And we farmed very well. So now, you know, Vladimir is a champion that scales very well. But he'll never scale this game. Because we're just up 20 CS. Now we're up a kill. Our teammates are all up a lot. And now the game's pretty much over. Now, pretty much every game, I'm going this Landry's build. Um, a lot of people will go Ludens, and that's completely fine. If you can one-shot people on their team, it's good to go Ludens. Um, Landry's is just really good. Again, we'll go help our team. Always facilitating our team. Landry's is really good against people who build health. And Vladimir obviously gets a lot of health. Yorick gets a lot of health. Diana even gets a decent amount of health. And Landry's just does more DPS in terms of, uh, like, over a fight. It's just a little bit worse at one-shotting people. And now we may cut the rest of this game. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what we're going to do for the video. But whatever happens, let me know what you guys like. Do you guys like us to cut these games that are just completely over? Um, or do you want to see how we close it out? Because the, the fact is... This game is throwable. I, I've seen clients do it. These games are probably the most boring game state. You just have to be very patient. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. We're going to keep last hitting. All of that stuff. Let's see how Twitch chat's doing. Get this guy an Oscar. <laughs> Should I facilitate my team when they make a bad play? So that's a good question. Um, We're only facilitating our team when we have like the opportunity. So, when I crash my wave, then I look to help my team, right? You never help your team if it would cost you, like, losing your lane, right? So, now that I pushed my wave, now I go see if Fira wants help. I'm not going to roam to Fira without crashing my wave first. So, you always take care of yourself. And what taking care of yourself first does is it makes sure you don't lose anything, so even if you decide to go look and then you decide when you're there, like it's not a good play and you don't commit to it, you don't lose anything in the mid lane. So the way I kind of view it is every time you do that, it's just like a 20% chance you just win the game. And if you take enough of those, GG, right? Like if you take enough of those, just 20% chance for free, you end up just winning. 
feel like if it's smooth from this point, a time lapse of the rest, that's a good idea, a time lapse. That's a really good idea. Yeah, so in silver, keep it simple is the theme. Next, we're going on to a gold account. And again, they have two people mid. When your teammates are winning, you get to just let them carry. I I'm not the carry of this game. Looking at this game, you would never guess that the victor was Grandmaster. But it takes a Grandmaster player to understand to be this patient. Well, now you guys could be this patient now that I'm telling you. When your teammates are ahead, don't do anything. Keep farming. Keep farming. You're the insurance policy. And we know Diana's been hanging around mid. And now we see the top lanes behind us. So there might be three people in our lane. I'm not going to try to kill him. I don't need to. I'm going to recall and buy my items, though. <clears throat> yep, there's the Diana. <laughs> now, after Lyantris, what do you build? That's a pretty good question. Shadow Flame is really good for snowballing. The issue with Shadow Flame is this flat magic penetration it has on it doesn't scale very well. So if you want the best scaling build, you go Death Cap and then you go Void Staff. You can build Void Staff first if they have a bunch of magic resist and then go Death Cap. That's also okay. I um, mean, that's generally what I like to do. If you're super ahead and you want to snowball, Shadow Flame is okay. Um, if you need Zonias because you're playing against a champion like Zed, you know, a champion that Zonias is really good into, you want the armor or the stopwatch is really good, you can mix that in. But most of my games, I will just go Death Cap into Void Staff. Oh my goodness, dude. I miss every cannon. Again, here's the Diana again. <clears throat> mm -mm -mm. Now Lux is here. Oh my goodness, they actually have so many people here. <laughs> oh man, these games are definitely the most boring because you just have to be patient. And there's so many people mid, we don't get to really do anything. Maybe we could do a cheeky alt Q on this guy. Shoots. Shoots. I thought he was going to die to that. That's okay. <clears throat> and we will just keep pushing. Try to line up the laser on the whole wave. Fantastic. Fantastic. <clears throat> now, when you're trying to close a game out like this, I often get questions, especially from this elo range, these, these kind of silver elo range. People are like, yo, JS, how do I close games out faster, right? I watch high elo and the games end really fast. Um, We might actually have to flash here. This is a little bit scary. Yeah, and we're going to do... Oh, we actually die. Well. We probably should have died. <laughs> um, but... That's exactly what's going to happen. When you're ahead, they have to make a crazy play. So let them make the crazy play and let them die. Um, I'm going to go for this large rod. So much AP. But the truth is, you don't get to end games out really fast if your teammates are silver. Right? So sometimes you just have to, you know, do the dragon. Do the objectives. That's the key. Do the objectives. Keep farming so you scale well. Be the insurance policy and do the objectives. So I want to do dragon. I really do. And then once we get Soul and Baron, then the end will come, but it won't be for another 10 minutes here, probably. And we're going to keep letting the enemy team overplay. Help our team with the objective here. Mm-mm. <clears throat> Okay, well, now they're just hinting. I think he dies to Lyandris. Yeah, I love me Lyandris. Lyandris is such a good item into, into Vladimir. And again, we'll just keep farming. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to take away from this game. The biggest key notes are don't overplay into Vladimir in lane. Just play around the map against him. Um, when your teammates are ahead, 
Don't take any risk. You are the insurance policy. Just farm well. Um, and then when you guys get really ahead, the enemy team has to do crazy stuff to come back. So be extra careful. It's really boring to play games when you're this far ahead. Especially if they're not going to surrender. Just keep farming. And like I told you guys, I actually am going to go for death cap. You know, of course, we're going to try to steal enemy camps. We're going to try to get everything we can here. Chess asking, why no lane swap? Um, Victor doesn't actually want to go to the side lane like other mid laners do. And in low elo, of course, we're not going to fight this. We're going to go back. We're going to TP. In low elo, your ADCs will not force themselves to come mid. So we'll actually stay mid. Victor's one of the few mid lane champions that wants to stay mid lane for the whole game. If you can, of course. Some games, your bot lane will take mid lane from you. And that will happen later today, I'm sure, as we play on the higher rank accounts. So if you guys are watching the video, feel free to skip forward to the next game. Um, to the next game where we will talk a little bit about that. Victor, Anivia, Zera. Yeah, Anivia is a little bit different. She actually does like the side lane a little bit more. Um, Anivia is more of a burst mage than anything these days, but... Yeah, control mages. Champions that like to play front to back. Oh, nice. Our team wants to do the objective. We absolutely will go do that. Yes, please. Baron is 100% the correct play. Anyone with good wave clear can stay mid. Well, good wave clear is good for split pushing. And there's some mid laners that are really good at that. Like Twisted Fate. Um, like a lot of the burst mages. But the issue with going in the side lane as Victor is you get ran down by anybody. So, if we go try to go to the side lane, like, it's very easy for us to get killed. So, when you do have to go to the side lane as a champion like Victor, you're going to be very careful. And you're not going to push out too far. Because if you push out too far in the side lane, you just get popped. And go buy our death cap here. We are very strong. Now, we already got this mid in him. So, there's nothing to really get mid. So, I'm probably just going to come top. Try to push these. Try to get this in him as well. <clears throat> I really hope Fiora doesn't die. That's pretty annoying. Um, and we can see they have a split pusher bottom. It's not really our job to deal with that. He's going to get this tower. He's going to get this inhib. It's much better for us to go top and try to break another inhib ourselves than to match the enemy split pusher. And we have a split pusher that's going to deal with it when she comes up. So we might lose this inhib. That's okay. It's not our job to deal with that. It kind of sucks in solo queue when somebody's not doing their job. But that doesn't mean you get to do it for them. Just got to focus on what you can do. And what we're going to do is break this tower. Now again, I'm really strong. So I'm going to try to come take this fight. Yeah, and they're just, we're just really strong because we've been farming all game. That is why you keep farming. Um, even when your team's really ahead and everything. It's not like we have an insane amount of kills, but we are incredibly strong. And we'll just keep poking these guys down. That's actually really scary. Yorick landing his slow on you is really scary. And if he puts you in the cage, we may have died there. Now, we're actually making a little bit of a mistake because Dragon is up. But we're keeping Diana top a little bit. And now we'll just go back and we'll work on our uh, Void Staff. Um, where did our lo-fi music go? There it is. <clears throat> nice. We get the bottom tower. We get soul. And now we're just thinking about breaking these inhibs. We see the Yorick top, so of course not our job to go up there. We are going to come down bottom. Chess asking, what's your peak rank? Uh, Grandmaster. Grandmaster 600 LP is my peak. That was last week. <clears throat> okay, our team's resetting. One of the biggest things is playing with your team. This bottom play is the right play. But since my team's not doing it, I can't force it by myself. 
So I will come mid lane. I will come with my team. And if we get a pick, we probably just end. <clears throat> oh, we'll just get the inhib again. And of course, I want to keep poking him down because we're Victor. Wow, she's actually really close to dying. Like if I... Oh my goodness, if I landed that laser, she would have died. <laughs> like a true silver player, chat. No, but the mechanics in this game, I missed a lot of minions. I missed a lot of lasers. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy spacing. Victor is a mechanical laner, but that doesn't mean you need to have really, really good mechanics to kind of climb on him. Especially through silver. You know, if we're talking about diamond masters, absolutely you have to be very mechanical. But that was the first game. I'll see you guys in game two. Hey guys, don't forget, the training camp is this weekend. The training camp is going to have tons of coaching, all for the price of $25. We're going to have multiple coaches. I'll be coaching 12 hours a day. And I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret. There's not that many people signed up. So if you guys sign up, you guys will get lots of coaching from me. I will be watching your guys' games. How it's gonna work is I'm gonna do lectures. We're gonna have a plan for the day. And then we will all play solo queue together. I'll watch you guys. We'll give you guys notes. We'll all kind of improve for the weekend. It'll be awesome. Check it out at jsmethod.gg. Um, get your ticket. It's $25 per ticket. Um, we're all going to have game plans. Here's what the schedule's looking like. Here's the coaches we're going to have. So make sure you guys come check it out. I appreciate you guys watching this video. See you guys in the next one. Peace. Okay, guys, welcome to game two. Here we are on the gold account. We're actually in gold one. Here's the op.gg. We're gold one. There's a couple of plat players mixed in, plat four. Um, so this game, I'm going to crank it up a little bit. I'm going to be a little bit more disciplined with my lane phase. Um, in this kind of plat elo, trying to go from plat to diamond, most of the game is in the first 10 minutes. So I'm going to be a lot more disciplined in the lane phase. I'm going to be a lot more picky with how we use our spells and where we stand. Um, you know, in the silver game, it didn't really matter. What mattered was we farmed well. In this one, it's going to matter much more. We're into a Zed here. I have the same exact runes. Only difference is I changed my ability power for my armor. Or uh, magic resist, sorry. Changed my magic resist for armor in the, in the minor runes. Uh, we're playing in a Zed against Master Yi. This is a game that... Um, a lot of Victor players might go Ludens, but again, I'm going to go Lyandris and Zonias because Zonias is going to be very good. Um, and I like the Lyandris Zonias combo. So into Assassins, they're very weak level one. You always, always, always play very aggressive level one. And we're just zoning them off. We're just aggression on a control mage. Isn't like trading crazy. It's just saying, Hey Zed, every minion you want to go for, I'm going to hit you. Now that one he had to use his Q for, so we don't get to hit him that hard. But if he's if he's going to auto attack this minion, we're gonna get much more than just one Q proc, right? We're getting auto attacks. We're being very kind of disciplined with what we get. Now, one major lane phase difference is we're not just gonna cast our E on cooldown like we did in the silver game. We're gonna wait until he steps up for the minion, and we're gonna try to combo it to get the most damage as possible. Now, same thing we did last game. Kha'Zix is pathing up. We're going to ward on our top side. Let's go ward right here. Crash the wave. And then again, we'll try to get some more poke on this guy. And we just want to keep priority. We want to keep push. Oh, hello. We might have to flash here, actually. Mm, yeah, I should have flashed. So, there's a couple of things going on there. Um... We should have walked up towards Kha'Zix rather than towards the tower. And I should have flashed earlier if I wasn't going to walk up. Mm, yeah, yeah. We should have walked up. I thought it would be too unrealistic for a gold plat game to walk up, but really it's just, it's unacceptable to not walk up. The whole point of getting this vision is to pull that gank. The whole point is to pull that gank. Oh, yikes. I cannot get to him. Mm. Yeah, and this game's actually going to be really hard now. So now we get to show playing from behind. It's a lot different than playing from ahead. Uh, from ahead. You know, we made a mistake. We put this vision on the top side. We got ganked for the bottom. We need to walk towards our vision. But we didn't. And now we paid the price for it. Now me and the jungler are behind, which is going to suck. Especially into Zed. 
Um, so rather than trying to push and keep Zed in lane, we're going to try to poke him down. Again, we don't want him to roam and kind of snowball the rest of the map. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, luckily he did not come back with Serrated Dirk. When these champions, AD Assassins, come back with Serrated Dirk, it's very scary. And now we have to play a lot more conservative because we're behind. But we're going to play to just poke him down as much as we can so that he can't roam very easily. And we're trying to just be mechanical about dodging the Qs. One of the biggest things about dodging ZQ is standing outside of um, the his base Q range. So that even if he does hit his Shadow Q, he doesn't get the, the double Q on you. If that makes sense. So every time he drops his Shadow, I'm clicking away. Away. Like here? So just the Shadow Q hit me there. His base Q didn't. Which helps a lot. Now we're poking him down a lot. Now, again, we're in danger. But since we're poking him down a lot... He can't really roam anywhere really successfully. And that's really the goal. When we're behind, we're just trying to keep him even with us. And again, we'll click away. So we only get hit by one of the Qs if we get hit by any at all. And again, a lot of the same fundamentals apply. Vision on the side with our jungler. Trying to hit the lasers on the wave and him. For those efficient cooldowns, just like that. Let's see, this guy's nice and low. And now we're actually getting close to six. Might be able to do some cheesy... Some cheesy action on him. And actually, this is a thing you can do on Victor, is you can ult the waves to get out of lane. And now we're going to back. Now we're going to reset, and we're chilling. Now, that ult was not great, because he can just push this, and we're going to lose a lot of this. That's okay. He's going to hit six. And the most important thing is we don't die. We had to do that because, um, because we are behind. And when you're behind, the most important thing you can do is take your medicine. That's what I call this. Take your medicine. You're going to lose pressure. That's okay. We're going to say Zed is Mio. Zed is probably going top. Um, cause that's what I would do if I were Zed. He's very low health though. So maybe Cossacks can kill him. And maybe he just went back. And yeah, Zed is top, so we're going to push to punish him. We just saw him here. And he hasn't backed yet, so we'll probably get a plate. And now Zed has just made a massive mistake because of our Elise is good. If our Elise overstayed, again, the game gets hard, but that's just okay. When you're behind, things like that happen. We're actually not going to get a plate. He's going to done any damage to it, but what we, what we are going to do is keep priority here. So that when Zed does get back. Oops. He can't roam very easily. He has to come catch the wave. And now we're just out of here. Our Kha'Zix wants to go bot side. So we're going to be very conservative. And go get us some bot side vision. We're going to walk very safely. Drop this ward down like this. And there he is. So now Zed and Yi are in this bottom side here. Which is really scary for our bot side. So we're going to try to ping lots. Now I want to make sure I get all these minions. Because again, it's one of the most important things on Victor is high CS. And I'm just going to make sure they know that Yi is down there. We missed a laser, which is really bad. That means we're going to have to miss some CS. That's okay. Alright, another tip on Victor. If you ever land a W on somebody, just ult them. Just ult them. Um, you may not kill them, but the damage from the ult is really good. This guy's really close to dead. But, this is really good for us. Now, I'm not going to flash or do anything too crazy. If Victor... No, no, sorry. Zed 
messes up his first ult. His pacing for the game is kind of really messed up. And if you can just survive the first Zed ult. Oh my goodness, he missed the cannon. The chance of you surviving the game is very, very high. Now, I'm just trying to keep him in lane because I want him to just not be able to do anything. And we see Yi bottom, so now I get to play really aggressive. Now I might flash on him. See so Kha'Zix setting up a gank. So I'm going to walk kind of up opposite of my jungler to kind of push him into my jungler. And it's just super easy because my jungler is here. I'm going to ask for him to help me push. That might be Scion coming mid. Just walk away. And now we're back in the game. Zed has messed up his first ult. Zed has just died to our Kha'Zix. And now the game is very, very, very playable. Um, It's a little bit scary because of our bot lane. Ooh, what to buy? It's a good question. I'm just going to rush my mythic. Ping that for the little ward timer. Um, now, you can consider TPing here if you think that he's going to dive. So when I saw him... Wow. Okay, I did not expect him to flash. I'm going to try to chase him into my Elise. And he should be dead here. Very nice. Oh, the Zed got here quickly. Okay. That's okay. As long as Elise gets out, that's okay. Oh my goodness, man. What a chaotic game. This game is almost as chaotic as the silver game. So this is really good. The first game, we got to see a hard stop. The second game, we're seeing this game where we're actually losing and kind of how to um, how to play off of that. Zed has not... One of the biggest things as Victor is you outscale. So, the best thing you can do is keep Zed mid. If Zed is staying mid with us and Master Yi is ganking us and that kind of thing, that's really, really, really good for our pacing. Like this play, if Zed goes down there, it's really bad. So we're just going to try to push and keep our boy Zed mid. Yeah, we definitely do not want to fight that. <clears throat> so, a lot of times, it can look like your actions have really big resounding impacts on your teammates. If we're keeping Zed mid, our team is in a good spot and they're going to tend to perform better. Um, when you watch good players smurf, it looks like they have better teammates all of the time. And it's because your actions can create better teammates, right? Like we're just going to keep Zed here. Just going to do that. So my whole goal is just to keep him here. If he's not leaving, we are winning. And I will be able to carry. So they're going to have to come to me. And if they come to me, they lose. Because my team will win, right? That's the whole idea there. Um, And now Master is bottom, so we call this trading. I'm going to trade sides and go top here. I think my Elise can survive. Heart steal Elise? I've never seen that. That's, that's crazy. That's one of those new builds. And now, I don't want to die to Zed on my way back, so I'm just going to recall and buy Lyandries. Wait, you could proc Heartsteel off the, the Scion zombie? I actually never knew that. Yep, and there Zed is. 
Be very careful with him. Let's see uh, how is Twitch chat going. What's up, Goblin? How you doing? Um, chat's asking Seekers. Yeah, Seekers does not feel as good as it used to. Seekers really doesn't. Um, I'd much rather get to my Mythic and then go into Zonia's than uh, buy Seekers. If you really want, sitting on one cloth armor is playable. But buying Seekers out does not feel good. Um, hmm. Tricky game here, tricky game. Nice. And again, Master Yi is still bottom. I don't want to run into Zed though. So I'm just going to keep pushing mid. Oh, there he is. Oh my goodness, dude. I've missed like the last three lasers. Wait, maybe we could have impacted that. But they're just fighting a 2v3. I don't want. Again, as long as Zed is not ulting my ADC, I am happy. You know, it may look like I'm being useless. But Zed has to ult my ADC or he will lose. Um, bum, 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 bum. It's a little bit scary, but I think I know Nautilus hook range better than he does. Make sure I get this one. <clears throat> and if there are extra people in our lane, and now our team is all off the map, so we actually have to be very careful here. So I'm just going to nuke this. I should have given the cannon to Lulu, but that's just a small thing. Lulu? Okay. I didn't give her the cannon, she didn't give me the melee. That's fine. <laughs> and I just want to wait for my team to come up. Wow, at least stayed, actually. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, and I think that's a pretty big mistake by her. And now, my whole team's gonna go up there. Zed, Nautilus. So we're gonna try to push really hard. And then again, trade sides in the map. I know Zed went top. I know it's likely that, um, like, he is there. So I'm gonna come bottom. Even something as little as cleaning up this pink, it's better than getting nothing, right? You sit mid, you get nothing. I got a pink, I hovered this play. It's very good pressure. Ooh, close. Yeah, this guy has a habit of dodging up and away from me, which is kind of good thing to keep note. If you're ever playing a mechanical champion, it's very important to kind of lock into people's patterns. I'm surprised he flashed back or, or went back to the shadow. And now, just like I said, we have our ADC taking mid lane from us. Very normal. Very normal. The higher elo you get, this is correct. And now we get to talk about side landing on this champion even though side landing is not very fun side landing generally does not feel good on victor there's this concept i have called playtime versus farm time now i'm gonna back and recall because i need to tp um yikes that's actually so bad I have no mono for laser. Okay, our heart steal at least top is just a little bit disgusting. And now I know Zed doesn't have ult because he just used it, but it's coming up soon. And I'll TP. And with the TP, we should win this fight. And we need boots. I'm going to go stopwatch first so that if Zed ults me this fight, we should be good to go. And I want to ult with my team. Right, we always want to play front to back. I don't want to ult too aggressive. And we will talk about side laning after this interaction. Hey, can we just shred through this guy? Yeah, he went a little bit too deep. A little bit too deep. Q 
Yikes, man. Perhaps I'll add potions. They won't do a ton, but they'll do a little. All right. Oh my goodness, they still want this fight? I don't, I'm just gonna recall. That's why you buy stopwatch first. Um, okay, side laning on Victor. Farm time versus play time. When there's nothing to really fight over and there's no like crazy interaction to take, you just go wherever you can farm the most. Now, right now there's nowhere really for us to farm. Oh my goodness, our Caitlyn made a mistake. Just kidding, bot lane we get to farm. And we're just going to go farm bot lane until the next important fight. And then we'll go back mid. Um, I'm going to come take our blue buff. This is something, if your jungler, like, isn't really fed and isn't pathing towards the blue, there's no harm in just taking it. If your jungler is pathing to it, that's when you tilt people. And then I, I don't take blue buffs if, if my jungler is anywhere near. So, again, side laning on this champion. We can't push out too far. Because he can be here. Zed will one-shot us. We have to let the waves come to us when we're farming. I'm actually going to sit under tower. Have to let the waves come to us. Okay. Oh, my team's fighting here. I'm okay with not being at that fight because... I didn't think it would go so hard either way that Baron was in question. But it actually kind of is. So again, that would maybe be a little bit of a mistake. With Baron up, maybe we have to be more around hovering around that mid play. But since we're bot lane, we're just going to full commit to where we're at. And we're going to go for this tower. And this tower is worth so much money. Now, again, on Victor... It's very important you stay greedy for farm and gold. We have the most CS in this game. It may look weird because we're not playing like on top of our team, but that's okay. It's worth it because if we can get to three items, we need our mythic, we need death cap, we need void staff, and then here this game we need Zonia. So we need those items. If we get to those items and we can play mechanically decently, we will carry our team. So that's kind of the trade-off. That's kind of the trade-off you have to be okay with taking. We're going to take all the enemy jungle camps we can. Here we're on our Zonias, which is really good. Um, I'm in a little bit of danger. But we see Master Yu top, so I'm going to yoink this. We're going to go back. We're going to buy our Zonias. I think... Okay, we'll do that. Elise is going to side lane bottom, which is great for us. Now that Baron is more in the question, now we're going to play through mid, even if we have to share. NCP, I'm going to grab a pink ward just because an objective is spawning in a second here. Yeah, it's like I has a lot of magic resist. All right. And we just have to flash. If we get another Q in there, it's going to be close. I was just trying to buy our team space to try to stop the Baron. Um, man, such a complicated game. And every time we die, our CS per minute goes down a lot. So we probably should have just given and pushed mid. We have made a lot of mistakes this game, and that's okay. Um, and... You want to kind of keep in mind the things that are awkward so you can go back and review them, right? So this game, we're thinking about the early play when Master Yi ganked us, when we had our vision topside. We should have ran up towards our vision and then up towards our Kha'Zix, right? Um, this death is an interesting play. We should not have died there, you know? If, if we were going to be late to that fight, we shouldn't have gone. We should have split pushed. We should have kept farming. We should have been greedy. And that's oftentimes the answer on Victor. You always want to be more greedy. Here, our team is together. As long as they don't die before we get there, it should be playable. Really sucks because this guy has force of nature. So 
So we actually need Void Staff next, even though I really want Death Cap. Okay, and now we just leave. Now we just leave, if we can. Yikes. Those Ash Arrows are scary, man. The Ash Arrow hitboxes. A little bit insane. And now, we will just greed for farm. Oh my goodness. Okay, worth it. <laughs> he does so much damage. It's so tricky. Because these guys don't have magic resist, but these two do. I really want death cap. But I need the magic resist to be relevant against the scion. There's no clean answer. No matter what we pick, we're not going to do a lot of damage until we're, uh... Until we get both the items. Let's go Void Staff. When you're playing a champion who's front to back like Victor, more often than not, you're going to be stuck hitting the Scion. And our job is to shred through the Scion this game. Yeah, I was kind of hoping we would lose one of the games today. But this game where we have made lots of mistakes, we actually have a really good team. So this game is genuinely lucky. Um, absolutely 100% it is. Hopefully in the next game, we play on the diamond account. And we'll play on high plat, low diamond. We'll be a little bit more... A little bit more that way. Yikes, that is not good at all. So here, again, another mistake. And oftentimes mistakes kind of build on each other, so it makes sense. This game is so mistake-ridden. But then you kind of ask yourself, especially in the review, you'd be like, okay, well, we were mid, and we died to Master Yi. Why were we mid? What, was there anything to fight for? No, this, we should have been in farm time. So what do we do in farm time? What do we do in farm time? We go last it. We go last it. Where is there to farm? If we were mid, look, all of these camps are up. We could have taken all of these. Nobody else is. Top lane. We could have pushed top lane safely. Um, we could have waited for the bot wave to come in. We should not have been mid there. There's nothing to gain. We need to get to death cap or we're not going to be relevant this game. And we just keep dying. We just keep dying. We need to get to more items. Now, again, not a ton to fight over here. So I don't really want to fight. But if we can bait them into overstepping like that, we always will. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Oh, man. Yikes. This is so uncomfortable, guys. This is so uncomfortable. In these games, it's always because you're poor. <laughs> Look, we don't even have the most CS in the game anymore. Shame on us. Your goal on Victor should always be to have the most CS in the game. Always. Luckily, our team is just carrying us again. And let's go get greedy, boys. Let's go farm up a little bit. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Okay, we do have TP if we absolutely need it. But our Elise is our carry and she just died. Or she's our most fed player. So I really don't want to make a play. I'm just going to ping them off and I'm going to keep farming. I'm close to Void. Actually, they got a pick. So maybe I TP now. Information has changed. But yeah, I would much rather just not. And now that the objective's coming up. Now that Baron and Dragon are coming up. Now we play for mid prio. Right, that's what our chant. Whoops, missed the cannon again. We're missing a lot of cannons in this video. Now we push mid. I cannot come fight with these guys without getting mid prio. Mid prio is king on Victor. Mid prio is king. Because now that we have this prio, we know where they're coming. And they're coming through this choke point or this choke point. So we set up right here and we shoot lasers and alts and they can't really assassinate us. 
Because we get to just stand really far away from these choke points. For any front to back team composition or any front to back champion. And we can come shoot lasers again because we can't get assassinated if we just do this. Hmm. We get the Baron and we get out. And now we're on Void Staff. So we're getting closer to being relevant in this game, chat. We're getting closer. <clears throat> um, Death Cap next. Now, Dragon is up. We're going to lose this Dragon. Because we have no mid prior. And our Elise is dead. So we don't get it. Um, I'm going to come try to trade mid prior, but I don't think we're going to really get it. We can Siege mid now with Baron. And that's what I want to do. Okay, if he dies, yep, we just leave. We just leave. We go farm. Oh, can I save her? Um, probably not. Luckily, the ult didn't reset. Oh, but he had flash anyways. Yeah, so we greeted by trying to save her. When the Cossacks died, we needed to back up immediately. This game, we're making a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. This is a very good learning opportunity. <clears throat> Account we're on today? Yeah, so right now, guys, if you guys are just coming into the stream, we're recording a video. How to win on Victor. We're playing on three different accounts. A gold account, or a silver account, a gold account, and a diamond account. And this is the high gold, low plat account. Yikes, this is getting scary. Mm -mm. Yeah, and oftentimes, climbing through this platinum range is often about fixing that early game. So, we made that mistake with Yi where we passed wrong. It's our fault this Yi is 22 and 7. You know, the last game, it was our fault our jungle was ahead. This game, it's our fault the enemy jungle is ahead. So, the biggest takeaway is that early game. We warded correctly, we just did not utilize it. Or if you're not going to ward correctly, take your medicine earlier and flash earlier. Mm. And I'm just going to try to farm here. Holy, we need 2,600 more gold. <laughs> 2,600 more gold. We're trying to speed run our 2,600 more gold. Now, can we sneak this crab safely? Because that would make me happy. Since we had bot prior and this crab's going down bottom, I think we may be able to. And then we're gonna take the blue buff. Oh, oh, it's like, where did it go? Now we have a large rod in base, which will help our damage a lot. It's another one of my favorite parts about Death Cap. It's uncomfortable to buy because these large rods are expensive, but every large rod is very significant. So we're starting to do damage. We're starting to be relevant. At the next fight, we're going to be very strong. Um, but again, there's nothing to fight over until the objectives are up. So we're not doing anything. We're farming where we can. Um, we're going to push through mid. Just trying to help get proud here a little bit. I don't necessarily want to steal from her. And then I do want to catch this top wave. I think that would be nice. Try to defend this tower. We should be able to. Now, our Elise is split pushing. There it is. We're starting to do more damage. So the play is the Elise split push. So we're playing around that. And now we're going to slowly rotate back mid. And try to fight for mid prio. Plus, these uh, super minions are really nice. Really nice. Okay, so we see multiple people bottom. So we get to be very confident in the way we push mid. Unfortunately, I think she's going to die. That's okay. That's just more time to farm. And since our jungle is bottom, I'm going to take his top camps. Oh, yikes. We don't have any top camps. Um, That's a bad play. With one of our teammates dead, yeah. We just need to wait for these guys to come alive and we should be okay. 
We just can't let the dominoes fall again, so don't get picked. We might even have to give Dragon. But, we should be able to fight Baron. I'm just going to farm as safely wherever I can. We might have to be a little bit sneaky and try to buy an elixir. Oh, they're going to try to end. Ha, huh, okay. It's hard for them to end into Victor Caitlyn. So, well, that's not going to stop them from trying, I guess. They're actually throwing pretty hard here, I think. Nice. Guardian Angel. Um, Bountain damage goes through Guardian Angel, so... It looks like the Yi just didn't know that. But, this is proof that, you know, in these, in these gold platinum games... People will just make mistakes. Like, as long as you keep... And we've made a- we've made a ton of mistakes! People will make really bad mistakes like this. If you could just kind of stay disciplined on what you're trying to do, even when you're really far behind. Every game is winnable. Never FF these games. So now we can contest this. It's a little bit uncomfortable because we don't have mid prior. Um, what on earth is that ghost? So we don't want to make a mistake that they just made. So we have to do our homework. Get mid prior. Get mid prior. Wait for somebody to show on Elise. If nobody shows on Elise, we don't get to do what we're trying to do. So, now our team is insisting on making the same mistake. And they actually just end the game here. Probably. We're gonna try to send them on a wild goose chase. Okay. Well, we tried to send them on a wild goose chase, but unfortunately, they just end the game here. So! This is what a victor loss can look like. And I'm actually very glad we lost this game because this is a very common mistake that's gonna happen in these platinum games. When you're trying to be a lane bully. Actually, they may not end. Maybe our bot side can defend. Uh, I don't think so, but we'll see. What happened is we didn't get to our power spike. We needed to get to death cap, but we we're just so far behind. Our CS is really low. We died a lot. Um, and it happened, we snowballed the enemy jungler. It happened because we didn't play lane correctly. It happened at that first death. This game got really hard. So what we need to do to fix this game is fix that first death. Fix that first death. And then this game gets way easier. We get death cap. Um, Master Yi isn't as strong. We get to be relevant at the fights. Zed doesn't get as strong. And then this game gets very, very easy. Okay guys, so after you have games on Victor like that game too, it's really important to look back at the mistakes. And when you have the mistakes, the biggest thing you have to keep in your mind is what could I have done to maintain my pressure while staying safer? So, right, we talked a lot about this first gank. Here we're getting ganked by Yi. Now, if we decide to walk towards our tower, Master Yi is gonna be able to cut us off, right? If we wanna keep the largest distance between us and Yi, we have to walk up. And if we walk up, Kha'Zix is here, and honestly, we can walk all the way to top lane if they're going to chase us, and that's completely fine for us. If we walk up here, we don't die here. If we're going to force walking towards our tower, we have to flash. This is a very common mistake. Now, the rest of this game, we talked about the mistakes throughout the game. Um, and this is how Platinum games get lost. We make a major mistake in late game, or in lane phase, and then we play it out, and it's super back and forth, and then like that last Baron play, we just kind of like, our team kind of forced it, and... Oftentimes, people will bring me a game like this. They'll say, JS, I lost this platinum game because my team like inted me. Or I lost this high gold game because we lost this very place. Like, no. Why was Master Yi so fed? Why did the game last so long? Why weren't you on death cap? Why weren't you farming good enough? Why do you have seven deaths? All of those are the things we're trying to kind of analyze. And that's th those are the takeaways from this game. And this is a very common way to lose in that high, high gold platinum elo range. Now, 
I'll see you guys in game three, the final high plat, low diamond elo range. All right, guys, we're hopping into game three, the final game, the high platinum, low diamond. We're actually playing into a diamond Yasio main here. Um, he plays a lot of Yasio. It's going to be interesting because this is a bit of a counter pick. But again, taking the same runes. We swapped back, we swapped back to armor. Playing into Yasio Diana. Definitely very scary. So when you have compositions like this, you kind of got to ask, what's the game plan? We have Victor, Jinx, Milio. Now, this game, we're playing a lot higher elo um, than the previous two. I'm going to crank up my lane phase. I'm going to crank up my kind of mechanics. I'm going to be playing. That's what the goal is at this high level. It's to kind of work on a lot more of that lane dominance. Um, I'm not really going to be holding too much back here. Where in the last game, I was trying to act like a little bit of a gold player. Um, Yasuo is a counter matchup. He's especially tricky because he spikes really hard at level 2. Where most assassins like Zed spike at level 3. So you still beat them very hard at level 1. Um, however, you have to be in a safe spot at level 2. So what I like to do is I like to try to crash wave 2 on their head. Because here he's given us all of the space. He's given us everything. So we're just going to kind of zone him off, make sure he can't slip up. And we're just going to work on crashing. Oh, uh, we just missed a minion, which is pretty annoying, but that is what it is. We're more focused on crashing this wave than we are getting the minions. Because now, we're under pretty much no threat. Of course, we'll get our ward up. We're under pretty much no threat. He's going to come back to us. Um, he's very strong now. Very strong. But we're going to let the wave come to us. Okay. Um, this might be the first game. We have a pretty unlucky team, but that is completely okay. Oh my goodness. I'm just missing minions Actually a lot harder to last hit while constantly talking than I would expect now That laser again, we last hit a minion with it and hit Yasuo super good laser Okay Now if we can keep this wave Oh my goodness that laser missed Yasuo if we get this wave on our side, that would be ideal. But he's going to crash it, and that's okay. You know, when your opponent starts to know their champion, they're going to start to do things a little bit more correctly. It's completely fine with us. Okay, the trick for last sitting on Victor under tower is you have to wait to start your auto attack until the tower has selected the caster minion. And then you'll auto it, and then you'll auto it after the tower auto lands. And that's how you will never miss a caster minion under tower. Now, the wave is going towards Victor, or towards Yasuo, sorry. And now we're in a lot more danger. We're in a lot more danger here. So, I'm going to slow push. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to build up a bigger wave. The bigger the wave, the more safe I can feel. Of course, I'm still not going to feel very safe because it's... Very scary. And now I'm just going to focus on crashing this wave if I can. Wave first here. <laughs> Boom. Wave first. Very nice. Now they're playing bot side. So we're going to play top side here. Um, we shall look up here. Take a look at kind of how things are going. We're going well. And now, we're not in as much danger anymore. We both have two waves until we hit six. Again, another laser to attempt to last hit. <clears throat> and we're going to keep the wave at the outside of our tower. Yasuo is trying to kill us. If he can't all in us in lane, we will be more relevant in the fights than him. That's our goal. Don't let him all in us. Oh my goodness, man. These last hits have been very unfortunate. And we'll proc a shield where we can. Now we can even use our W to freeze here. But in this specific situation, we don't need to. Now, I'm guessing he backed. Either way, this wave is going back towards him. Oh, okay, he didn't back. So I'm going to give him an opportunity 
to push his way back to me. I'm going to stand on my caster so when he tries to tornado me, it hits my minions. Ah, he's smart. He wants to freeze. It's a sign he knows how to play his champion. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I missed that. So now, we have a bigger wave. It's pushing towards him, but it's still on our side. So now we're just going to try to nuke the wave. Now he's going to try to all in us here, because he knows what we want to do. And we'll just back. He may decide to freeze this. We're just going to buy Lost Chapter and TP back. It's completely fine. And if he doesn't freeze, we probably won't TP. Buy another potion in the pink. Actually, we will. If we can keep him in lane, we just stay up tempo. Yeah, so now we have a, a game where our team is losing really hard. So now we get to talk about... And it sucks because we haven't had as much of an opportunity to impact the map because we're playing a harder matchup. And that's okay. Sometimes, based on the draft, your job is going to be a little bit more limited. That's okay. That doesn't mean you get to force... Doesn't mean you get to force... Job's a little bit more limited this game because of the situation we're put in, and that's okay. So many mistakes, especially at this higher level, are rooted in people getting emotional that they can't, you know, shot that W to make sure that wave lands, so we stand our high threat. People get emotional that they can't, like, uh, impact all of the lanes, or they can't stop their teammates from inting. Our bot lane's gonna end, no matter what we do this game. The question is, what's our job? Our job is to not die to Yasuo, and to be ready to play fights later with our top side, and play around our top side. Now we could try to freeze this with a W, but I'm okay with the wave being in the middle. If the wave's in the middle, he's going to push it towards me. Um, and I'm actually going to come ward on this top side with the Nocturne. Always putting Vision on your strong side. Kind of trim this up a little bit. Nice. <laughs> and now we got an objective, our team's in base, and we're just kind of chilling. If the wave's in the middle and we're farming, we are we are just okay. Again, another game where I'm going to op into Lyandries because Diana, uh, Mundo, Thresh, even Yasio, they're all going to, you know, build some HP. Their bot's getting dove, that's okay. They're going to keep dying. Oh my goodness, they get a kill! It's a bot gap. You know, you really can't expect them to get anything there, but the fact they get a double kill means we probably we can carry this game. We can carry this game. We're going to do it by keep farming. We're going to do it by playing the fights well. We're going to do it by playing around our top side. All of those things are things you got to be thinking about. And now our, our laser in powers, so now we get to be a little bit more um, forceful with the wave. Now. Now we get to be aggressive. And we're going to back. We're going to keep working on our uh, Landry's here. We're going to get some boots. Nocturne is strong. Now the game begins for us. Now the game begins. I'm tempted to buy another potion. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll just sit on these until we use them. Um, let's see. Does chat have any questions yet? What's up, Gibson? Um, <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, being comfortable, being even in these games is one of the biggest things. What's up, dear? Okay, enjoy class, dear. I love you. All right, chat. Um, when you get distracted, try not to int. That's uh, that's a that's an extra tip you guys get from this game.
She with Dana, and we don't get to we, we don't get to punish this. We're gonna lose that because our bot lane's dying. It's okay. We're gonna trade sides of the map. Oh, I'm gonna keep watching my Nocturne because what on earth is he trying to do? <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep trading. And now we actually have a slight opportunity to turn the tides of bot lane. And we're gonna hover this just in case Diana shows. We will kill Diana as well. She doesn't, that's okay. And that is how you hover your strong side. We just make sure that Diana doesn't get a triple kill there. Like, that's all we're doing. That's really good. It's tricky because when you're playing at this level, sometimes, you know, the game's not going to tell you when you do something really good. Because it's not like silver where you're just going to get a bunch of kills. Or you're going to be up 50 CS. You have to understand what you're supposed to be doing. And when you do it, you have to be happy. Like we did. And now Tristano's mid for whatever reason. Which is fine with us. We'll stop her back, which is nice. Now, there we have a bunch of people on this bottom side of the map. We're Diana's top, so I actually do want this fight. Ah, oh, just kidding. Oh. Yikes, Diana actually did come. Okay. And I, that's okay. It's okay because Yone is just absolutely dominating the top side. And Diana's camps are kind of, they're kind of getting messed up with her choosing to do that. So that's not too bad to hover there. I took a little bit of a gamble that Diana commit to her camps. And the fact that she did it, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's just fine. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And we are in a very good position this game. You know, it's one of those games where we're not up a crazy amount of material. Oh my goodness, I can't land a cannon this whole video. We're not up a bunch of material, but we're up a really good position. And on Victor, that's the goal, to put yourself in a really good position, and then it's hard to lose. It is genuinely hard to lose on the champion when you're in a spot like this. Wow, their Yasuo has over 10 CS per minute. Absolutely phenomenal stuff by the Yasuo. Um, and he's picked up a kill. Yasuo is playing very good. Sometimes, like in this higher elo, you're going to play against people who are who know how to play. And you're just going to have to keep it up. And whoever cracks first is going to be who loses. Like, I'm not going to show here because Yasuo and Diana are right here, we have to assume. Now they show bottom, now we can step up. Hmm, Diana is below us, mm, it's definitely interesting. Hmm. Oh my goodness, what was that? I'm a little bit scared. Um, let's come hover this again, just because they're so deep in our jungle. Wait, wow. Oh, I need my laser. That's okay. Um, and I believe this ends up being worth it. Yikes. Yeah, we did not play that mechanically the best. Oh my goodness. Actually, it ends up not being worth it. We need to be hovering that a little bit earlier. A little bit earlier. But again, we are still in a good spot. Now Dragon's coming up. I'm on my Mythic. I'm on my Sork Shoes. I'm very strong. I'm going to TP mid for mid prior. Yes. TP mid for mid prior. We're facilitating this fight. Very good stuff. Now we get dragon. 
Now we're starting to turn our good position into better material. Through the objective, through this mid tower, which makes the game a lot harder for the Tristana to play. Again, Yasiel's doing a very good job of trading sides with me. I'm very impressed with this Yasiel. He's, he's playing very well. Um, Diamond 4 is a very interesting elo. This Yasiel is Diamond 4. In Diamond 4, you'll see some people do very, very good things. But you'll also see a mix of very, very bad things. It's very interesting. Again, we're being very careful. We're making sure we don't get all ins like too crazily. And now we just win the dragon and we're chilling. Diamond 4 players, if their style happens to, you know, their, their kind of personal gameplay lines up well with yours, it's going to be a tough battle. You're going to have to battle it out. You're going to have to play very well for a full game. But there's also some diamond players that you see and you're just like, I'm not sure how you got here, um, who have kind of very rocky fundamentals. This elo is definitely one of the most volatile elos in the entire game because of that. There's such a big variety of the types of players here. Wow. And we get another objective. And this game is just hard to lose. It's simply hard to lose. Um, it's awkward because I have no money. This guy's going to give me blue buff, which again, it's just... I'm actually surprised at the quality of this game. I need to pick the best emote. I don't know the emotes on this account. Thank you, sir. Now, it's a little bit awkward. Um, do they have any magic resist? They don't. So this is a game where Shadow Flame is decent. Um, I'm actually going to do the classic full scale build. I'm just going to I'm just going to slam Death Cap. I'm going to slam Death Cap. I'm not going to buy anything. It's a little bit awkward not buying anything. But think about the tempo. There's nothing for us to fight over for the next couple minutes. So coming out of base with nothing is completely okay. Completely okay. So we're not doing anything. Nocturne's going to get an ult. I'm going to come bottom and farm a little bit. It's about all that's happening. There's no objective. No fight to take. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Some of these jungle camps. Actually, I'll leave that for Nocturne. Since he's pathing down. I thought he would go up to this. But since he's coming down to the camp, I don't really want to steal from him, especially since I can just push out this bot wave because we saw Yasuo mid. <laughs> Stream leaked to your friends live. Did my Discord restart? It's interesting. And we're just, you know, thinking about farm, not thinking about anything crazy. We'll check if their blues up with laser. Laser giving vision is one of the most underrated things on this champion's kit. Um, wow, I should have taken the Krugs. I should have ended up skipping them. Whatever, I'll take these Krugs. And now Baron's coming up. So now I'm going to go back and buy my large rod. Or honestly, if they try to stop my back, they'll all die. That was a... We call that a bait in the biz, and now we just get barren. <laughs> um, wasn't really an intentional bait, but once it happened, I was like, ah, sure. <laughs> That's definitely a tilter for him. If my team wasn't there, we kind of have to acknowledge that we're in a scary spot and redo our back, you know, walk further back. Um, but that was a nice little, nice little trap we set up there. <clears throat> now, it's probably better to force Dragon first, since it's less risky. 
And when you outscale, it's always better to do the uh, less risky thing first. But if we're very confident we can win this fight, that's fine. There's nothing like inherently wrong with this. You know, it's maybe a little bit awkward, but... And then you're playing for the fight. You're not actually playing to coin flip the dragon. You're playing for the fight. Like we just did there. Now just make sure we don't get like five man Diana ulted. Keep trying to shred through them a little bit. And that is how you carry on Victor. You play the fights. You put yourself in a good spot. And you play the fights well. Very good game. Very good game. This has been a very, a very teachable game. Lots of learning. Lots of learning in this game. Hmm. <laughs> this feels like a bit of an overplay. I I'm not going to lie. I don't even have a good reason as to why it is. Sometimes you just get feelings. But now that I see her on vision, I feel a little bit more confident. And we'll just nuke this and we'll get out. Um, overstaying for the fight? That's an overplay. Now again, think about the pacing of this game. There's nothing to fight over for the next six minutes. So I'm not going to take the snowball item. I'm going to opt for the scaling build. And I'll go match my laner on the top lane. Um, but if Dragon was coming up, and I bat and I had money for Shadow Flame. I would have bought Shadow Flame here. Now, when you're in Diamond, these start these kinds of decisions start to matter a lot more. I'm just gonna take blue buff and then play through mid. I'm gonna do a 4-1 to try to siege and, and collect these towers. And we'll try to kill this guy in mid if he lets us. These kind of decisions matter. You cannot build Shadow Flame. Oh my goodness, I have to ult him. Definitely a little bit awkward, but they pretty much just lose the game off that now. Bro, Milio Fire Camp is very strong. Or Campfire. <laughs> Fire Camp, yeah. That's funny. Um, It's a very strong ability. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of healing and a lot of movement speed and the range on top of it. Wow. I haven't played with that many Milios yet, but he feels strong. How have you guys thought about Milio? You guys liked him? You guys think he's too strong? He, he definitely is too strong. <laughs> he definitely needs a nerf. Oh my goodness. It's the one bad thing about Lyandries. Okay. And this was a game against a Diamond Yasuo. This is how you play Victor in Hyelo. I'm calling Hyelo like Diamond Plus. Um, but it, it's true for Masters and Grandmasters. You're going to have games where in lane phase, your job is just to keep your opponent, especially when you're counterpicked. Yasuo, this is a very Yasuo favored matchup. Um, and we're gonna try to steal jungle camps on the way out here, of course. And then we'll just five man bottom. Should be very simple to win. Um, wow, there are none. Yeah, we'll just tell them to go back. Don't overplay. Um, this is how you do it though. You'll play lanes that sometimes your goal is just to farm well and kind of go even. And then play the fights well. And that's gonna happen. And this is, this is how you do it. And we even had an inting bot lane. Now, it's very fortunate our top lane was ahead. If our top lane was inting as, ha as hard as our bot lane, this game gets very complicated and we probably don't win. Even if we play it this well. Oh, and they just decide to forfeit because they have kind of no line to win here. But that was game three. I hope you guys enjoyed how to win it, Victor. I hope you guys enjoyed the loss. The loss had the most learning in it. So make sure you guys check that out. Let me know what you guys think about this kind of video. I appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.